Hey everyone, Dr. Davis again here to explain to you the Diels Alder reaction. Now, this is going to be just a very short introduction so that you can understand the mechanism and then you'll be able to add extra complexity as you go on through your course. Now, the Diels Alder reaction won a Nobel Prize because it gives us a very simple way to make new carbon carbon sigma bonds, which is a real challenge for organic chemists. It takes place when a conjugated diene reacts with what we call a dienophile. Now, let's take a moment to look at each of those. A conjugated diene would be something like this, the very simplest version being a 1,3-butadiene. 1,3-butadiene has alternating pi bonds, so each carbon is sp2 hybridized, and there are a total of four electrons within that system, at least pi electrons. A dienophile, on the other hand, is really anything with pi electrons. Uh, the simplest example of that would be ethene. So an ethene molecule can act as a dienophile reacting with the conjugated diene 1,3-butadiene. And when this happens, we get a situation called a 4 plus 2 pericyclic reaction. The 4 and the 2 refer to the number of pi electrons that each one of these systems brings to the party. So the conjugated diene brings four electrons, while the dienophile brings two. This is very important, and we'll actually discuss why this is very important in a subsequent talk. But for now, just take my word for it. The four plus two is a very special reaction. What goes on during a four plus two pericyclic addition is that a single concerted step joins both of these molecules at two different places. So we're going to take two pi bonds and turn them into two sigma bonds. Let's watch what happens during this mechanism. I've highlighted the pi bonds in red and those that convert into sigma bonds are going to turn green. Now the actual mechanism, believe it or not, today is still debated. But what we do know is it all happens at once. So I'm going to show you a very simple representation of this reaction. You ready? Here we go. See what happened there? Two of my pi bonds have now become sigma bonds. So at this point, I've got a cyclohexene molecule. Entropically, joining two molecules to form one is a very disfavored proposition. However, from an enthalpic perspective, creating two sigma bonds out of two pi bonds creates an enormous amount of energy. So this deals all the reaction is highly favored from an enthalpic perspective. And that's actually what drives it forward. Now I want to comment one, on one other thing while we're talking about the Diels-Alder reaction here for the first time. And that is that the diene must be in what we call a cissoid conformation. Now you may not have ever heard this term before, cissoid. But it should sound an awful lot like something you're very accustomed to hearing. And that is cis. That cis conformation we can associate with alkenes, right? When alkenes are in a cisoid conformation, the two groups are, or the two largest groups at least, are closer together in space. And when they're in a trans conformation, they're farther apart. Now what I've drawn here might seem ridiculous because you know that carbon-carbon sigma bonds have free rotation. So as I've drawn these two molecules, those carbon-carbon single bonds should be rotating freely and therefore these two should be completely interchangeable. But the truth is they're not. We call these 1,3-butadiene molecules cisoid and transoid. And the reason is that those pi electrons are delocalized. They're delocalized in such a way that those central carbon-carbon bonds do have restricted rotation. Not quite as much as a full-blown alkene, but a little bit, enough to make it interesting. So what happens here is when a dienophile approaches a cisoid diene, it can react. But when it approaches a transoid diene, it can't. And the explanation for this is actually very simple. Let's place our dienophile in a reactive position here next to the cisoid conformation. As you can clearly see here, a reaction is going to take place. This is a very easy setup. 
But let's put that same ethene molecule next to the transoid butadiene. When we do this, look at how far apart the reactive carbons are. In this case, that's not going to happen. There's simply too much space between the two carbons we're trying to join together via this ethene molecule. And so no reaction will take place. Therefore, the Diels-Alder reaction requires that the diene be in the cisoid conformation. And this is going to be very important as we continue our discussion, and we'll talk some more about this in a subsequent video. And that's all for now. Good luck with studying your Diels-Alder reactions. I'll see you soon.